Hi, everybody. Thank you for um, coming to Two Chairs and One Artist. Yes. Today I have with me my guest is Sunder Yen. She's new here to Charlotte. She's been here for about six months, yes. <laughs> but she is she's already in the art scene here. She has work uh, displayed at a restaurant called Counter. When did you realize that you had this passion for creating such amazing work? Thank you. I think it was around um, when I got my first film camera. I was 18 um, and I had switched from chemistry to visual arts at Clemson. Um, and it was my first project. I dove, dove into the body and um, did a bunch of documentary pieces on different parts of my body. And I displayed it in my mom's house and she was like, what is this? And it was, <laughs> it was a little alarming because they seemed like nudes. But mm -hmm. that's when I realized, like, I just think about art in a different way. And that camera, like, documenting the present on something so antique, that film, like, it was different for me. And I realized, like, art, I love the expression of it. But it wasn't until age 24 that I became serious about the passion for it. Really? Yeah. Wow. And you are, what? 28. You're 28 yes. now. She's four years into this, everyone. <laughs> Look at what happened in four years. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, so you mentioned that, that you were at Clemson. Yes. What in particular influenced your art? The expectation of existing in one way, but actually living and feeling in a different way. And that that battle between the two on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always say I feel like I'm a liberal at heart, but being in the South, I was raised to be conservative. And I do think that when you have young parents, they don't realize they throw you that liberalism. Mm -hmm. But because of the parents I have, they also gave me like, mind your manners, you know, understand not to step too far into something that you can't get yourself out of. Right. And um, something my professors in college told me, and one in particular, Sydney Cross, my printmaking teacher, she said, you tiptoe on controversy in such a way where you say what you want, but you still have respect for everybody around. And I've held on to that because that's how I was raised. I always respect people. And that in and of itself is an art. Okay, your artist name, Sunder Yen. Yes. Where did that come from? I love it though, because it's because it's so unique. Thank you. Um, it honestly came from me coming out of a place and realizing that everybody around me, we have our own paths, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we can't coexist. So I honestly looked up just words that just meant different things mm -hmm. and um, came across Sonder, and it was kind of like a wanderlust. Like I, that was yeah. my word I looked up, wanderlust. And I um, was like, I need some synonyms for this. I'm not about to call myself wanderlust. You know? Right. Let me see something else. And then the word yin is like an affinity for something. Mm -hmm. And I just, when I was a kid and I'd be in the car riding with my mom and dad, I would always look in other people's cars and try to like throw myself into their bodies to kind of understand where they're going, where they're coming from, who they are, what they feel. And I've just, anybody I look at, anybody I talk to, like I just really try to understand them so I can coexist with them and understand how to interact with them so their quality of life can be as good as I feel like mine is. I love that. That's a lot of empathy. You care a lot. I do. I yeah. really do. Yeah. Um, for the people, like truly, I care. I just, you can't try and change the world without understanding or wanting to understand where people come from. Yeah and putting yourself in their shoes sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's what drives me yeah. every day. You have various styles of art. Mm -hmm. You have abstract, digital, yes. photography. <laughs> yes. um, you do the etching. Mm -hmm. Will you share about these different styles? How yes. did these all emerge because it's such a wonderful range. Yeah. Okay, so the first, my first introduction to art, um, into fine art, was with my film camera. Um, 
my chemistry teacher took me down to the visual arts building. He said, I'd rather you get out of chemistry and failing it for the third time and graduate with something that you like to do. And I was like, okay, but because my parents had never really championed for the arts, I was nervous, I was scared, and I didn't know what to expect. And so my first class in fine arts was photography. And I was tasked with going to get a 35 millimeter camera and film paper and film so I could develop all of it. And we did this in the dark room. Yeah. And it was something about spending time in the dark that allowed my thoughts to just kind of do their own thing. Mm -hmm. And you're having to like process stuff without looking at it. And I kind of looked at my art at that point and kind of like life, like this is kind of like life. You go throughout life sometimes and you don't know what's going to happen. Right. And so from there you have to take more classes so you're introduced to more styles of art. And I'd never heard of printmaking before, um, wood carving, like any of that type of stuff. Like it was new to me. I'm from a super small town where our art program was almost cut. Like so all we did really? was draw. Yeah, it was, it was kind of sad, but when I got to college and I got to a place that offered more than what I was used to, mm -hmm. that's when I started to see the world in a different place and started to think about just the different kinds of art. And it wasn't until I took my printmaking class that I realized that you could combine different styles of art and make mm -hmm. it what you want. So I was able to use some of these. This is actually um, Cosmopolitan. <coughs> is actually the first self-portrait with my 35 millimeter camera that I did and I'm literally just looking into the actual camera and at the time I was really on this um, self-image kick and what it means to be beautiful mm -hmm. and so I just thought about Cosmopolitan magazine because I read it often like yeah. it was my favorite why am I reading that in college you know <laughs> like, right right I compared myself to the girls on the cover and I just I thought about all the things I wanted to do to my body to make it look the way these ladies did. You know, I wanted my lips to be a little smaller. I wanted mm -hmm. my cheeks to be a little slimmer, you know, neck to be a little longer, mm -hmm. face to feel more slim, and then don't even get me to the rest of the body, you know? Just right. that, that in itself showed me that art, you can use any material to express how you feel. You don't just have to use film brie. You can use wood to get out that frustration when you carve. You can use you can use screen print to squeeze you something down with some anger, you know? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Uh -huh. Press to press, just press down and put pressure on something else other than yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's just where it all came from. And when I, this is a one, two, probably a three color reduction cut wood. I don't think I have it with me today, but with that you have to look at each layer and spend time with it before you you print it again yeah so in that you're spending time with yourself with your thoughts depending on what your piece is about mm -hmm. and with this one in particular being so personal this was like a good three weeks of like diving into my brain and understanding why i chose some of the words i did on here like yeah. sexy down here like things mm -hmm. i didn't feel you know mm -hmm. but this was one of the beginning pieces of exploring. And is is that sunny? Is that sunny down yes. there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. That is amazing. And I see the arrows are going up, mm -hmm. pointing to mm -hmm. cosmo mm -hmm. cosmopolitan. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. That is that is amazing. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about um, what was at one point called Kanye West taught me, but I know for the times Yeezy taught me. <laughs> Um, this is probably one of my favorites because of the fact that when I, this print in particular, um, I had a classmate called me narcissistic and I was offended when he said it, but when I got older and I looked back, I was like, I very much was. So this, each little section is actually from my camera roll at the time and each picture, they're different but these were pictures that I would post on my Instagram, but it would take about 30 to 50 of them in my phone before I chose one. And they all look the same now, but back then they didn't. Right. And so um, on top of that, I have this blue heart that I printed because I wanted to show how my lifeline at that point was dependent on how other people saw me mm -hmm. and the praise I could possibly get from them if I looked a certain way. 
and this Kanye quote, it's 1 a.m. and I can't stop thinking about myself, had also just got out of a really bad relationship and I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's all about me at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time though, I'm thinking about myself in ways like my worth. Like, am I really worth this? Am I really worth being at Clemson, you know, with all these kids who have plans after college? I had no idea what I was going to do. Wow. You know, so this is so jam-packed with this girl who looks so different in each picture. She didn't know who she was. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm up thinking about myself, but who is self? You know, where's my lifeline? Is it really me? Is it people? Is it perception? So that's where this came from. And what people don't realize is that with printmaking, you can combine different different elements. So this is actually film, and it's a film negative. And this is one, I was going to do a CMYK screen print, which means that when you layer all four colors, they come out the color it should be. Right. But I was like, mm, no, I just want to do one color, and I'm going to do red, which signifies like my blood cells, what flows through me the thing that pumps from my heart, you know? Oh, my God. And so once I did it in red, I was like, I'm not touching this. Yeah. I need that blue heart. Where's that heart? Where's that heart? And that's why I chose blue, because your blood's blue before oxygen hits it. Yes. So it just playing with color, combining different methods of art. I just think it speaks to how people are made up of so many different things, but how sometimes we can kind of cut ourselves into pieces and make that who we are as a whole yeah that's not how we work right we are made up of so many pieces and this is one of those pieces that signifies that for me you guys never expected to see (laughs) this negative behind this piece i i know you didn't okay and then this piece here yes so um in release this is This was a new method of screen printing for me. This is actually a solar print. So it's layered with another um, film, another piece of film that I actually took underwater. And so it's actually two pieces. So there's a waterfall. That was an image that I took. It was a colored image on a 35 millimeter camera. Mm -hmm. And this is actually a picture of me sitting underwater taken with one of my professor's cameras. Wow. And then I carved a piece of wood to show this girl jumping in. And you can see it's really embossed here from putting it under the press. I carved in a piece of wood, and this is negative chatter in the back. So chatter is what's left when you're carving, whatever is picked up by the brush or the Mm -hmm. actual press itself. But it's negative. There's There's no ink there. But there's something about it that draws my eye down to what's going on down here. Yeah, it's it like does. You don't know what's going on. If I wouldn't have told you this is a person, that this is a waterfall, mm-hmm. there's a brick behind that waterfall. Like, you wouldn't know what it is. And at that time, I'm 22 years old, just learning how to swim. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I had a fear of water. Anything that was bigger than me, uh-huh. <laughs> I was fearing <laughs> it. And so I just wanted to really embody what it felt like to finally submerge myself in something that I felt was bigger than me yeah that was bigger than me and like this negative chatter it's kind of kind of self-explanatory at that point in my life I had started to release a lot of the negative people around me a lot of the negative talk a lot of the negative feelings at that age Mm -hmm. and one of my releases was going to my um, swimming pool in my apartment complex and going running for about two miles and then I'll go jump in the pool and I'll sit up underwater and I'll just try to get out whatever it is I need to wow releasing. yeah so this piece and my body was snatched at that time it was looking good so this this was a pivotal piece for me as well and a new method of printing Mm -hmm. And with this one, you would just layer the images on the plate and then you put it under UV light. And what I thought was interesting about that, um, a lot of people don't know, I'm a a tomboy, but I'm a girly girl at the same time. Mm -hmm. I love getting my nails done. Yeah. Like, I really do. And it's something about the, when you put your nails under UV light, like how that dries it. Like, it's something just so interesting to me about how the color changes Mm -hmm. when you put it, like, I don't know, it's just something 
maybe it's just me as a creative I don't know but yeah. being able to kind of relate two different parts of my life into one mm-hmm. that meant something to me as well so. that is beautiful thank you all right and then we have Barack Obama oh yes Mr. Obama so with Obama I think this I printed this in 2017 it was kind of my first step back into getting into art and trying to find who I was again um, but the difference I didn't have a printing press I didn't have all the tools that Clemson University has to offer to make art mm-hmm. um, so I was a little nervous about what it was going to come out to be but this ended up being a one two three four five a five color run that I did with a wooden spoon mm-hmm. and with a wooden spoon a wooden spoon and some really cheap carving tools and when I got done I cried because I felt like God had told me at that point you don't need all of the glitz and glam to use the gift I gave you you can use what you have it was this was one of the toughest pieces and in actuality I had a friend from Clemson who had asked for me to paint him a picture of Obama mm-hmm. and because I was so consistent and not confident within my art it took me a year to even get started on the painting really mm-hmm. but instead I started to do this yeah and what was different at that moment when he asked me for that painting I was still living with my parents mm-hmm. and I think it's important as an artist that you have a space where you feel freely and you can create without feeling like the pressures of whatever chores like you know yeah you know how it is living Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so when i when i'm living by myself and i uh took a sabbatical we're gonna call it that from work okay (laughs) (laughs) took that sabbatical Uh uh-huh i'm just sitting in there i had my hair up in a pineapple and i'm listening to um the sos band yeah and i'm just carving into this and i did this within all like three hours and even in college this would have taken me weeks to do because I wasn't there with my confidence. But it was something about walking out of corporate real quick, stepping back into Bree, mm-hmm. and understanding that, yo, know, God made you something totally different than what you're living in. And right. you can find that. Yeah. And using a wooden spoon that I found in my apartment and using these cheap eleven dollar carving tools and a piece of wood that is tough, this was the perfect person to do this with yeah because he embodied something that I did not have so when that guy asked me for that painting I ended up finishing this I got it framed and I sent it to his house and he had no idea he gave me a call and it was funny because he was on a new walk in his life as well and he said I didn't know what was at my door he said but when I opened it and I saw it he almost started crying yeah I don't know if it was because it took me so long or Mm -hmm. if it was just the fact that it was something he asked for but he said it was even more than what he expected and this is that chatter I was telling you about so this is the actual block that goes with it and what people don't get is sometimes you have to paint it first you have to ink it with your rolling slab Mm -hmm. and what's even interesting about this my little roller is four inches long yeah so to get an even coat it kind of wasn't possible for me I just kind of had to keep rolling and hope and pray that it was going to come out you know looking okay Mm -hmm. but I had to do that with every layer so every color is a different layer and I don't know, this was just such a pivotal piece for me as an artist that showed me you can do it. Like, yeah, you can do it. Yeah, because this is tough to do outside of a studio in my living room, Mm -hmm. you know. But this chatter, that's what this texture part is. And this is where you can still see some of the ink after I've cleaned the block. But each each layer represents that color when you carve it back. And there's something about chatter for me that it just adds emotion Mm -hmm. to a piece. And it just kind of shows the stress of what your body may go through. Mm -hmm. And I thought about Obama and I thought about what he meant to people when he stepped into the role he did. Mm -hmm. And I thought about what he weathered, but how much grace he still showed with it. Yeah. And for me that's when I started to kind of dive into myself and ask myself, are you embodying what you want and are you being graceful in the way that you would want someone to be graceful with you? 
no matter what the situation is. So. Amazing. Wow. So started the journey to self-discovery. And I think it's people like them that strive, that make me strive to like, to just be so human and authentic that people understand like you can impact people without having a whole bunch of money. You can yeah. impact people without having a status. Like they've probably always impacted people. They mm -hmm. just finally got a platform to yeah. be able to impact more people. Yeah. And I think about the different people every day that I meet that I'm impacted by, you being one of them. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like you never know what shape, what color, what size, what age they're going to come in. Yeah. And you just have to be open-minded enough to receive it. Mm -hmm. And they're just two amazing people that made me realize that. Her art is just amazing. Thank you. And this is, this everyone is just a small sample. So I'll talk about this one too. So this mm -hmm. one um, is called Indecision. And it was a three run line of cut that I did. Um, this is when I started, I just started cranking them out. It was that summer on the sabbatical. Mm -hmm. um, and what's so funny about it, I had no money coming in. Like none whatsoever, but I was right. so happy because <laughs> I, I was creating art. Right. I was in my little one bedroom just living it up, you know, and something about this piece in particular, indecision, is just kind of that moment where you just back and forth about stuff because you're not sure where you stand. Yeah. Because you're not solid in yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where this came from, the color scheme, just I wanted something that felt very imperial, imperial-like, mm -hmm. that just was like royalty because I think at the time, like I had just, sometimes we get obsessed with celebrities and things like that. Uh -huh. and I'm still a kid at heart. I like princesses and princes and kings and queens and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I thought about how they're pressured to make decisions that maybe they're not ready for yet. Yeah. Um, and how I'm like them in a way. I'm just not in that status yet. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And I don't know, this is when I started to become a force field within myself for self. Okay, Brie? Where do you, where do you stand on this? Why do you stand on this this way? Is this coming from you? Is it coming from someone you love? Is it coming from someone who has taught you something that you should believe in it one way yeah. and never open you up to another way? Yeah. So that's what indecision was about. And this took me every bit of like two hours to make. It's like the more I started getting into these, I could just crank them you, out. Yeah, yeah. Cause that energy, that energy, that energy was flowing. Yeah. 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 There's something about when you're doing what you're called to do, when you're when you're doing what you're supposed to do. There are challenges you face because your passion will take you places you've never been, mm -hmm. but you're equipped to get through it. Yeah. With the with the defiance, that's like I'm not quitting. Exactly. And that fire, it just keeps growing, and it'll fuel you. Yeah. So. Beautiful. Thank you. So. Puzzled history, I don't have with me. This is actually, um, I've gifted every piece of my edition except for the one that's in my home <laughs> right now. <laughs> so I had five of them and now I only have one left, which is the first original, but this is the block that I created. Um, the really cool part about this is when I printed this, at the time um, I was at Clemson and <laughs> When you're a minority in mm -hmm. a predominantly white institution, you're faced with a lot of different things. Yeah. And I do feel sometimes, um, I was blessed to be in the art department I was because they welcomed like diversity, they did. Mm -hmm. And they did have a platform for you to be yourself. Um, but at the same time, there was a lot of educating that needed to come on my part that I wasn't quite ready to give yet because I wasn't there mentally. Yeah. But this was just like the beginning where I scratched it. Um, and this was at a time where I was just like pro myself, mm -hmm. <laughs> like pro myself, which meant that I was pro whom this black woman is, you know? Yeah. Like, what what are you about, Brie? And um, there were some things, racial things that happened on Clemson's campus that made me uncomfortable and I didn't know how to express it to my classmates mm -hmm. or even, even with people that look like me because it was kind of clicked up. At right. a PWI in the black community. Mm -hmm. And so with this piece, I just kind of wanted to go to what I felt internally, but how pieces of it would be missed because I'm putting bits and pieces of what I was taught in the past about my culture, my history, and trying mm -hmm. to apply it to present day. Yeah. 
And when you're when you have a curated lesson of your own culture and history, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't work for you. It actually really doesn't. You have to go and find out that stuff yourself. Yeah. So this was a piece for me to kind of first tell myself, Brie, you don't know your history the way you should. Right. But when I printed this, in the background you have red, yellow, and green, and this individual's clothing is black. Mm -hmm. So you can assume that looking at the attire is probably a Black Panther. Right, <laughs> right. <something> right. Like <laughs> However, um, I think there is such a negative connotation associated with the Black Panther movement that I really wanted to kind of put it on paper, mm -hmm. but then explain to my classmates that it's a puzzled history because you don't know everything about that movement, about how it connected to the civil rights movement. Yeah. And as we discussed before, with the colors being red, yellow, and green, my classmates assumed that it was a Jamaican piece. And I'm thinking in my head, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Jamaican <laughs> flag is missing the red, but I, I could be wrong. Right. right. I had to let them know this is a Pan-African piece. These are Pan-African colors. Yeah. These colors mean something totally different than what you're assuming they mean. The symbolism means something totally different than what you think they mean. So that was just like a little piece of me realizing while I don't know my history, there are others that don't look like me that assume my history for me. And we can't have that. Yeah. We can't have that. Yeah. So this piece is one of my favorites, and this is probably one of my favorite blocks because it's so clean looking. Yeah. <laughs> this is clean. <laughs> but this chatter, this chatter, you can fill in the face if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. This in itself is just, to me, a piece of art just because is is distress it shows i don't know it just shows something different is it hinted on at that time how big pieces of me were missing yeah and i didn't know it i didn't know it but i i didn't realize that at 27 or 28, Sandra Yen would come in and fill those pieces in. Yeah. And she would be a force filled with it. And she would dare you to say something she don't like about it. Right. I love you with grace and compassion with my words, but will educate you on what you need to know. You know? Yeah, exactly. So this was this was Bree waiting to become Sandra Yen. Yep. Just didn't know it. So this piece for me is very is very special. And it has to be very special for me to really give these pieces away <laughs> and only have one original left. Mm -hmm. Never sold it. Never sold it. You never sold it. Never sold this piece. Never sold this piece. I honestly gift a lot of my art. Mm -hmm. I feel as with it being a gift, it's my duty to share. I'll sell some stuff. And yeah. I'll sell, you know, I'll sell a lot of art. But there's something about some pieces that giving feels better. Yeah. Than charging you. Mm -hmm. If you had a child that came up to you and said, hey, I want to become an artist like you, what advice would you give them? My first question would be why. What would oh, be your why? Yeah. Because if you're just out there to make something pretty to put on a wall, that's okay. But what is your why? The way I like to think about it, Makoto Fujimura said it best. I like to think about God as being the first artist. And I feel special because he made me an artist, which means that he thought enough of me to give me hands to create. He was the first being to use his hands to create this entire world. Yeah. So I feel, you know, mm -hmm. a believer. And so when I, when I see kids, when they're drawing and stuff, I mm -hmm. wonder why are they drawing? What are they drawing? And when I look at other kids who can look at a painting and say, oh, that's pretty, just because it may look like something they're used to, mm -hmm. it makes me think about why would a kid want to become an artist? And for the kids that want to become an artist to express themselves, to change the world, to impact, my biggest piece of advice to them would be, you don't ever let anybody tell you who you are and what you should be and what type of art you should create. Yeah. Because I do feel like I was pressured a little bit from some individuals when I was in college mm -hmm. to create black art. And yeah. I struggled with that term because I felt like what they wanted to see 
was not a real representation of me. Exactly. And as I work with kids, you know, at-risk kids, Title I kids, there's always this propensity to put in front of them what people think they need. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these kids are faced with trauma Mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Exactly. I'm still a kid that has trauma within. Mm -hmm. So you can't tell me who I am and what I should be when you don't know what's inside me. Right. So kid, if you want to be an artist, do you know what's in you? Do you know that? Mm. Are you listening to what other people are telling you what's in you? Yeah. Because people can tell you all day what they see, Mm -hmm. but they can't tell you what you feel. No. They can't. There will be people that try to make you feel inferior, but will you allow that? Will you be so solid in yourself Mm -hmm. to take criticism and understand that it does not define your self-worth? Exactly. And those are all things that I faced and didn't have the confidence, you know, the faith, the support to really battle through that and be like, I'm an artist, day in and day out. That's mm-hmm. who I am. That's mm-hmm. who I'm going to be. No, I got raised into something else that was still just as great, but I wasn't happy. So, kid, if you want to be an artist, is it going to make you happy to yeah. create? But to also have people look at you and tell you that this is not the best path for you, or you can't do this because you can't paint or you can't draw yeah like I was told in college you know Mm -hmm. are you going to let that deter you from being what you said you wanted to be yeah how solid are you that's powerful (laughs) because it's true Mm -hmm. it's true because all art I really think people look at art and they look for what they can recognize But when it's slightly off Mm -hmm. or the colors are slightly misplaced, Mm -hmm. then then it causes them to kind of like, you know, and then they want to put their opinion on it. Well, that's really no, it is art because it's coming from a place, from a pure place, from that individual, you know. It's more than putting a paintbrush to yeah. to a canvas. It's more than putting a pencil to yes. to a paper. Yes. There's a whole process behind what you put on that paper. Yes. If anyone wants to buy your artwork, um, where do they go? You go to Etsy, the Sonder Yen. It is on Etsy. Um, I am in the process of moving platforms to art pal mm-hmm. so i will have my prints and some of the originals available on there as well um and you can always dm me on instagram at the sonder mm-hmm. and i will always get back to you and i'd be happy to sell you directly any prints that you would like early word. excellent and then i'm going to put her information in the description all right until next time we'll Bye, see y'all. you later